Good morning. morning. Welcome to Bethesda. We're glad you're worshiping. If you're visiting, a particularly warm welcome to you. Looks like a beautiful day here in the Sand Hills. We're glad you're with us. Highlight some announcements if I might. I hope you've seen them on the screen or they're there in your bulletins as we get back into printing bulletins there. Um, Today's Communion Sunday, so I hope that as you came in, you took the small cup there that we'll be using during the celebration there. Uh, Today, pickleball. Four o'clock, back uh, on the court, back behind, and youth groups meeting. They're planning for the youth Sunday coming up uh, the 16th of this month. Uh, Let's see. CE is Tuesday. Evangelism meets on Thursday. Uh, So take note of that, those on that committee. Um, uh, The the flowers behind me right here are from the uh, celebration of David Troutman's life yesterday. So we want to remember the Troutman family and their time of loss and their healing in that. The elevator, the project's completed, came in under budget, and it's paid for. (laughs) We're going to celebrate that on Pentecost Sunday, uh, the 23rd. So, yeah, a couple of weeks. Uh, Go ride it right now, though, please. Uh, uh, that's, That's a great thing. It's truly a great thing. Let's turn our hearts and our minds to God. Let's worship the living Lord. Now let's stand together for our call to worship, please. Please join me. Love listens when we are weary. Love is sharing from our heart. Love longs to be with God. Love wants the best for others, putting their needs before ours. We love because God first loved us. This is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us. We gather to experience this love of God, to share the love of God, and to stir up love for one another. Let's sing that great hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
Please be seated. At this time, I invite you, if you would, to join me in this prayer of confession as we look to the Lord. Let's pray together. God of unending love, we fall short in loving others. We pass judgment on others and brush off those who seek us for help. Forgive us when we focus only on what is best for us and not loving others as you love us. Restore in us a willingness to move beyond our personal concerns to show love to those we meet. Guide us back to you, the source of all truth, goodness, and love. Amen. The truth is that apart from Christ, we can do very little. The goodness is that Christ has come to us, and the love that comes is the means of our forgiveness to be restored, to be renewed, and redirected. Thanks be to God for the forgiveness that comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Share that with others, please. Please be seated if you would. Psalms 22, 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before thee who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Prosperity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.
and he will bear you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. First John 4, 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love because not known God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son in the, into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his only son to be the anointed sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfect in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him, from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. And now from the Gospel of John, 15th chapter there, Jesus' words to the faithful. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine... Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Vines, vineyards, branches, fruit, pruning. These aren't new metaphors for Jesus. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel talked about vines and vineyards. The prophets warned about pruning if, well, if folks didn't behave. So when Jesus used these metaphors, his disciples could connect. Although this might have caused some of them to be a bit edgy when Jesus said, God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
Every branch that does not abide in me is thrown away into the fire, burned. Ooh, ouch! Cut off, burned. Boy, this may sound like a, a good agricultural practice to be done by a gardener in God's vineyard. Thankfully, we're branches, not the gardener. So, Pruning's not in our job description, thankfully. Fred Craddock tells the story of a pastor that he knew of a large church. He was successful in many ways, except the big church had many problems. Fred met him on the street one day and asked him how things were going. He said, terrible. I'm thinking of quitting. Oh, you're not going to quit, are you? Why not? He said, you know, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to buy a big piece of land in a neighboring state. I'm going to build my own church. I'll have a study where I can do my work. Big, beautiful church. Tall steeple. No sanctuary. No Sunday school rooms. No fellowship hall. No members. Just me and God. I'm going to clean the rolls up. <laughs> Craddock said the difficult part of this whimsical idea is that the boss said, I'll handle the pruning. Jesus never mentions we were to inspect the fruit, prune, or cut off branches. So why has the church somehow attracted self-appointed pruners for centuries? It's baffling. Why do some want to prune those they can't get along with, or maybe they just can't seem to muster up enough love for some of them? Folks, our faith, Christianity, is a relational and incarnational faith based on staying meaningly connected to the vine in ways that nurture us, fulfill us, and make us productive. And this stays, and this happens when we're on the vine. This is the last of Jesus' I am sayings. And Jesus says, he's the vine. You know, in our core being, we each desire to be connected in ways which, which, which give to us, don't take too much from us. You know, and some personal relationships can take more from us than they give back, even the most intimate friends or colleagues. This past year, we've learned being connected digitally fulfills us only so much, and being physically separated from one another diminishes us. This pandemic's made that clear. And yet now we're seeing more and more folks connected globally than ever before in history. I can communicate with my friends in India and what they're going through. And this is only going to grow. But we're also seeing a, a kind of a hesitancy with connecting to institutions and organizations and clubs. <laughs> For some, it's just simpler to not be too connected with all those different branches. You see, when we're not connected to the vine, this leaves a steep challenge to experience a fulfilled, a meaningful, and a fruitful life. Jesus teaches that the path to fruitful living requires staying connected to the vine. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 5. But the good news is, when we remain connected, God takes care of bearing the fruit. Thankfully, God's got this. Craig Barnes is the president of Princeton Theological Seminary, the largest of our 10 PCUSA seminaries in the United States. He wrote an article about anxiety in the church, and he wrote it before politics and pandemic started consuming us. He starts with the obvious. Some folks who fill the pews in mainline congregations may not be back. They decided doing church didn't do a lot for them. And they may not have left in a huff, they just Disconnected from the vine. So he suggests mainline Protestant churches stop fretting about their future. He said that anxiety takes up the air and leaves the church too lethargic to offer anything to the world. Stop 
fretting about structures and memberships and divisions and futures. He says instead we need to immerse ourselves in the baptismal waters that proclaim the perfect love of God that cast out fear. An alternative to anxiety? Let the church do what it's always done best, what it's done from the beginning. Stop thinking about the future and sacrifice itself for mission. Folks, God abides in us. I don't know how many times we heard abide from Justin and myself this morning. <laughs> but you know, abide kind of sounds like an old-fashioned word. <laughs> you ever been by a motel sign? It usually says, stay here. It doesn't say, abide with us tonight. <laughs> Friendships fade. Treaties break. Contracts expire, businesses teeter, God abides with us, and we abide in the vine. You see, abiding in the vine is a group practice. We do this together. There are no freestanding branches. We're all connected to the vine. When Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you, the you is plural. That may seem obvious, but some tend to read scriptures from a personal or individualistic perspective. God's promises to abide with all of us. And all of us abide in the same vine. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love, you, plural. You see, God abiding in us frees us, frees us and empowers us to bear that fruit. Our desire to be connected never vanishes. In the body of Christ, we may change our church or our place of worship, but we're forever connected to the same vine, no matter where we belong. You see, at our baptism, we're grafted into the vine as a branch. And over time, we're nurtured, we grow, we produce fruit. And Jesus is clear, staying connected to the vine is our source for experiencing, sustaining, and yes, enjoying life. He said that my joy be in you and that your joy may be complete. Verse 11. Eugene Peterson wrote, that with church membership, we have a hard time wrapping our minds around the idea to say that I'm a member of Second Church is like referring to your own hand as a member of your body. You know, being a body part has some serious consequences, right? A hand can't just quit the body without serious consequences. And in the body of Christ, a branch can't be cut off without trauma. The impact is to the vine and the branches. God abides with us that we might abide in Him. You see, abiding is first and foremost always that God first loved us. An abiding, steady, constant presence dwelling in us, holding on to us as we abide in the vine. I'll close. Pastor was preaching on this passage in John 15. Talking about how God prunes us so we will be more fruitful. He told about a, a large congregation. And in their heyday they raised $400,000 to build a new sanctuary. The next year they voted to give that $400,000 to the community agencies there in the county. They couldn't live with themselves in a big, pretty building with so many community needs facing them. Well, you know how it goes. The next year, the community found some new problems that popped up. And the leaders of the community came back to this church for help. The church officers were told that the church wasn't doing enough to help. The pastor and the officers got upset, responding like you might think. 
hey, we just gave you $400,000 last year. Community leaders, yeah, but you all know what the church is supposed to be doing. God is just giving you another opportunity to do more. And if we forget sometimes to, to thank you, or we keep asking you for more, just stay close to the vine, and you'll know you're doing the right thing. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that all things are possible as we stay connected to you. And that is good indeed, because you abide within us. May we find comfort in knowing not just that you first loved us, but you never stop loving us. You always welcome us, and you bind us together as the church, the body of Jesus Christ, connected to the vine. Amen. I hope you received a small cup as you came in. If not, maybe somebody can help you get one that's needed. So, here's the fruit of the vine. Jesus used that image, the cup, the chalice, the wine, the fruit of the vine. And we come this morning to receive that sustenance, that nurture, that promise of God abiding in us. How? By the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we humble ourselves, welcome the Spirit into our lives, and receive these gifts. These are the gifts for all of us. All are welcome to this table through Christ our Lord. I want to remind you why we do what we do, because our Lord Jesus Christ did it. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. With thanksgiving, we offer our grateful praise to the risen Lord. Let's pray. Lord, these are the common elements of the ground, bread and wine. And we come here today believing and trusting that you promise to be present with us as we spiritually receive you through these gifts. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit would move in and through this, that you would awaken us to the depth of your abiding in us and the desire to abide even more in deeper and greater ways. So bless this that it might be a blessing to us so that we in turn might be a blessing to others. Help us, O oh Lord, to bear fruit. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And so on the night of Jesus' arrest, when he was in that room, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you, the gifts of God for the people of God. Also took a cup. And as he poured into the cup, he said, this cup is a sign of my new covenant. Of my blood poured out for you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take all of you and eat.
Would you bow your heads and your hearts once again, please? We thank you, O Lord, that perfect love does cast out fear. And we know, O Lord, that as we come to this table, we bring all of who we are and all of our concerns. You've met us here, you've blessed us here, and now you've nurtured us so that we may grow just as you intended. So we pray, O Lord, that you would abide in us in a new way after being in your presence this day. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. If you're able, I'd invite you to stand in our affirmation of faith. It comes from 1 John, the third chapter. Let's join together. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Please be seated if you would. Oh, the power of prayer. Sarah Swartout is with us this morning, if you didn't see her. (laughs) Healing prayers. John Wilson is with us this morning. The power of prayer. (laughs) And I could call all your names, too. Let's bow our heads and our hearts. Loving God. We have nowhere to turn but to you in times of need, and we turn to you, just as we are instructed to do, to just turn back to you, who abides with us, sustains us, upholds us, nurtures, heals us, and we pray that that healing would go on in our lives, in our community, in this nation. Oh, Lord, we know that you never give up on us. You never leave us. Even when we harm you, you have nothing but love and goodness for us. So that, we pray, will make our hearts tender and more loving. Lord, we know apart from you we can do little, but we can love everybody with your love in us. We thank you for that. You've shown us how. You've instructed us. And now you've equipped us through giving us yourself through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we know it's not just about us. It's about everybody, all of us together. Loving one another the way that only you can do. So we ask this morning, O Lord, that you would instill in us the challenges that you want us to have. So we'd step up to the plate and own them. We pray, O Lord, that you would push us just a little bit to love a little harder. We pray, O Lord, that you'd open our eyes just a little bit wider. And we pray, O Lord, that our compassion would extend a little bit further just as you've extended all of that to us in our lives, throughout our lives. We come this morning, we pray for this nation. We continue to see things that are disturbing to us, so certainly they must be to you. We continue to give thanks for all of the goodness and truth that we see in so many lives, people standing up for what is right, showing that care and compassion to those in hurt and need. And We know it's not just our country, but around the world. We know we're in it together. So help us to extend those prayers that we see are so fruitful. Help us to believe that one of the fruits that you would have for us is not just that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, but the fruit of prayer. So we come to you this morning as a praying people, and we give you thanks for answers to prayer, and we pray together that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray saying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Jesus, thy boundless love to me. Let's stand and sing if you're able. Hope you have a blessed Sabbath day. Go to love not just in word, but in deed. Go in love as you have been loved. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.